Thanks so much for coming today, Tyler. So we've collected some, you know, questions on social media. We hope that our audience would be able to know more about you through this interview. First, um, which basketball player in Hong Kong has the best chemistry with you? Uh, definitely my retired ex-teammate Ian Hosford. Okay. Can you share like a uh, memorable experience? Definitely when we used to run back doors. Uh, we used to have a really good feeling off each other. I'd just give him a look and he'd know when and where I was going and it would help relieve pressure off the defense and get a couple easy points every game. You've played basketball in various countries. Share a unique or funny experience while playing abroad. Uh, definitely while I was playing with the Canadian national team and, and we were playing Italy and in Italy. And towards the end of the game, uh, I think we were leading by a couple points. It was just a friendly match, but one of their players wasn't happy, and he kind of hit our player. And because of that, there was a little scuffle, and both benches cleared, and it was a little bit of a ruckus, uh, which we looked back at and thought was quite funny after the fact. Oh, really? Did he get hit? Yeah, he, he got hit pretty bad. The, the Italian player came up behind him and hit him pretty hard. Did you get hit? No, no, no. I, I came in after the fact. So, okay, sure. Yeah. Name your HKBA D1 best five team squad. Okay, so at point guard, I'd go me first. Um, at shooting guard, I'd go Nathan Yu from South China. Uh, at small forward, now I would probably go um, either Gilbert um, or Siwa. Uh, at four, I'd put Ian, uh, my ex-teammate, and at five, I'd put Duncan. Do you think you have a big difference on and off the court regarding your personality? Um, I think a lot of people would say yes. I, I don't think so, but a lot of people on the court see me, you know, real fired up and, and energetic and emotional, and, and off the court, you know, I'm quite quiet and reserved, so. Wait, I thought it was the opposite, like on the court, you were kind of like cold blood killer, and then like off the court, you're kind of nice. Yeah, I, I mean, I am a cold-blooded killer on the court, but I, I can be, you know, a little bit aggressive on the court and stuff like that. And, you know, I play with a, a high level of passion. Um, but And then off the court, I'm definitely more relaxed, yeah. What are your biggest weakness in basketball that no one knows? Um, my biggest weakness in basketball that no one knows would probably believing that I should be shooting every shot and that, you know, sometimes I get carried away with that and, you know, I, I need to not think like that all the time. But you still make every shot, like almost. Uh, I mean, I, I try to. No one, no one's perfect. But uh, sometimes I think I get a little carried away thinking I should shoot every shot. If you get to have a superpower in basketball, what would it be and why? Uh, I think we'd be able to like regenerate on command. So like if it's the fourth quarter, that I could go to feeling like the first quarter. So I'm 100% fresh while everyone is, is tired. If you weren't a basketball player, what career path would you have pursued and why? I definitely would have been a hockey player. I grew up playing ice hockey and uh, I was actually a much better hockey player than basketball player. So I would have played hockey. Oh, then why didn't you like pursue uh, a hockey career? Because uh, being the competitive person I am, uh, no one thought I could be any good at basketball. So I just wanted to prove people wrong. What's the most meaningful or impactful charity or community work you've been involved in and how has it affected you? Um, probably helping at my friend's charity called More Good um, and they, they deliver meals every week to people in need and I've, I've gone there and helped serve food and you know uh, package the meals together for them. Um, you know everyone needs to eat so, so that was a, a pretty memorable one. Any advice for less privileged youngsters who want to pursue their professional sports dreams in Hong Kong? Um, well, first of all, I mean, privilege in sports really doesn't mean anything because, you know, you look at most of the great athletes in the world, they came from nothing. So, you know, you can look, whatever sport it is, you can look across the board. A lot of athletes come from nothing. Um, sports is all about, you know, commitment, dedication, first and foremost. And then, you know, working at your craft and being obsessed with it every day. Do you think that uh, they also need a good coach in order to, like, improve? It's not just about, you know, their own dedication. What do you think? I think it used to be like that. But now with, so, you know, the Internet and YouTube and all these things, you, you can go watch, you know, top-level training of whatever sport it is whenever you want and, you know, Go out, try the drills, mimic the drills, you know, go watch it again, film yourself now, watch yourself do it. So I think uh, in the past you needed a good coach, but now with technology I think it's a lot easier. 
So like in Hong Kong, uh, people usually call you Taina. But like, do you have any Cantonese name you've uh, made up or you know think it's better? Uh, my teammates have given me the name the Gehe, which I believe means the machine. Oh, Gehe. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what's the best advice you received, and how has it impacted your life on and off the court? Um, definitely the best advice that I received was that it doesn't matter where you come from, when, especially when it's regarding sports. Um, it all matters how committed you are and how dedicated you are and, you know, being obsessed with your craft and that if you do that, you know, you'll usually end up in a good place. Oh, I see. Have you ever faced a situation where you needed to communicate in Cantonese, for example, like with your neighbors, uh, like talking to an old lady in the wet market? Any funny stories to share? Um, no, only probably when I've had to tell the taxi driver in Cantonese where I live uh, and giving them my address. Oh, that's funny. Telling the taxi driver to, t uh, telling your address to the taxi driver. Uh, what was his reaction? Like, uh, confused? Yeah, well, a lot of times, because I know in Cantonese there's nine tones in pronunciation, and I feel like I'm saying it right, and then he'll be a little confused, and then he'll say it, and it sounds the exact same to me. And then he'll be like, oh, this place. But I was like, I think I was saying it the same, time, same way as you were. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, last question. Uh, do you have any pre-game rituals or maybe interesting routines that you'll do before a game? Uh, or on the court? Um, my my pre-game ritual is pretty straightforward. Um, you know, I just get to the, get to the gym, uh, warm up. And I'd say the only thing that I really do is I just kind of envision how the game's going to play out, uh, you know, what I'm going to do in certain situations, and I just kind of replay them in my head uh, until the game comes, and then I try and, you know, be completely clear while I'm playing. Oh, I see. Uh, I'll take your word for it. Maybe that will work for me too. Thank you.